it's really interesting how this this came about because um, and Austin and I were at a, a meeting. Um, we had some meetings last week in Orlando, Florida, and we were having dinner um, and we got in late. We were tired. We just sat at the bar and we were get, having dinner and we struck up a conversation with the guy next to us. who was a really interesting guy. Um, and he he uh, asked us what we did. And, and we told him, you know, we have a hair loss company. Um, and he's like, oh, did you hear about the article that was published in the Daily UK, which is a big art, which is a big publication in uh, the UK. So, Philip, this is in your neck of the woods. Um, but we're like, no, we didn't. Um, he's like, yeah, there's uh, a, a new study that came out um, about Propecia and Merck. And um, so so I'll get into that in a minute. But um, I wanted to tell you guys how Propecia got started, um, how Propecia came to to be and um uh, and this is it. So these are, these are two, um, there's, this is a study basically, but it was a study that was done in 1942, um, that there was, it, it basically made the correlation that, uh, eunuchs or men that do not have testicles don't lose their hair. Um, so that's kind of how this whole thing got started. So this is a picture of the study, uh, by James Hamilton. Um, and this is, it was in, um, the American Journal of Anatomy. Um, so if you guys want that, I can share the link in the group, uh, but I took a picture of the of the actual study. So 1942, but the 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 correlation was that that basically through this they realized that hair loss is caused by hormones, um, and that uh, you know if men don't have you know testosterone or if they don't produce testosterone uh, from their testes that they they won't have hair loss. Um, so um, effectively what, what Propecia really does is it, it, it's called a five alpha reductase inhibitor and it blocks the, it attempts to block the conversion from testosterone to DHT by reducing this enzyme called five alpha reductase. But there are all kinds of side effects, um, with Propecia that I experienced personally. I took Propecia, um, you know, I, like I said, I was voted best hair in high school. My hair has always been very important to me. I got voted best hair in high school my senior year. Um, as soon as I graduated, I started noticing a receding hairline um, and balding around the crown, and it kept getting worse and worse. And I immediately got out my mom and aunt are pharmacists. We have three doctors in the family, and they told me, you know, they're medical, um, you know, they're in the medical industry, and they told me to get on Propecia and Rogaine. So I was like, thank God that there's a solution. So I immediately started taking Propecia and using Rogaine religiously, and I kept losing my hair. Um, so not only was it not very effective in my case, um, and I even then graduated to taking off-label prescription drugs, uh, oral minoxidil and dutasteride, which is a much stronger version of Propecia. Um, it is it uh, it blocks a it blocks a higher concentration, and it um, there's two different types of five alpha reductase, but it blocks. Yeah, you know, basically it's a stronger DHT blocker, um, and so I had a lot of side effects. And to be honest with you, I didn't really know what was going on um, because I was so depressed about losing my hair. Um, I didn't really correlate that I was depressed because of Propecia or Finasteride or then taking Dutasteride. Um, I just thought I was sad and depressed and I was, I was just bumming on life because my hair has been my identity. I've always been into my hair and I felt like I wasn't going to be attractive or I wasn't going to, you know, I felt like I wasn't the man that I used to be. And, um, and I was also really young. And I was like one of the only guys that I that I knew at the time that was losing their hair. Uh, so it really hit me emotionally. Um, but um, thankfully, uh, you know, through this journey and, and all this trial and error and trying all these things and really becoming, um, you know, immersed in the research and the science and talking to, um, you know, the most brilliant people in the industry and learning about these things, I was able to you know, get off Propecia, which is, you know, the solution that eventually led to what, what we know now know as Adagen. Um, but by being able to get off Propecia and Finasteride and Dutasteride, um, I felt dramatically better. Um, so I had severe depression um, and I also had really slowed healing um, and brain fog. Um, and again, I mean, nobody told us about told me about this uh they they said that it was um you know that it could affect your libido and your sex drive and things like that and thankfully i didn't have that issue but um but nobody ever told me that it caused depression um until 
um, until, you know, I was, I've been off of it for years and years, thankfully, um, and my hair's better than, it, than it's ever been. So um, you don't need Propecia or Finasteride, and uh, they're obviously much better alternatives. Um, so, so yeah, so this is a study that came out. It says, uh, as an article that was published, says Merck knew it's, um, it's anti-baldness drug Propecia is linked to depression, reports of suicide, but decided not to update the medication's warning label um documents show so uh it says newly sealed newly unsealed court documents so there's literally court documents um that uh that Merck has that it showed um that Propecia was linked to depression and reports of suicide but they declined to add the warning to the label um and this is a summary of the article i i, I put the article I, I highly recommend you guys reading it um i put it in the group last week um but uh, so Merck, Merck's drug Propecia was approved in the, by the FDA in 1997. Um, so guys, we are using the same uh, and, f you know, minoxidil is the other FDA approved drug. Uh, so we're using the same. There are only two FDA approved drugs. And I get I go deep into that um, in the book and, and the reason why there's only two FDA approved drugs. But we're, we're using the same technology that's been around since 1997, guys. Um, and uh and so uh it was the first ever drug to treat male pattern baldness um and it said at, as early as 2009 merck knew of more than 200 reports of depression including suicidal thoughts and men taking the medication in 2011 during an update of the popular popular drugs label merck and the fda merck and the fda declined to add depression to the drugs label as a potential risk since that decision, uh, it, it's interesting that Merck and the FDA, guys. Uh, so since that decision, the FDA has received more than 700 reports of suicide and suicidal thoughts. Um, 700 reports of suicide. Guys, uh, um, like hair loss is a big freaking deal. And this is this is why. And this is why. Um, it's it, like, I feel, I, I do feel a huge sense of responsibility and the things that we're, that we're going to, to make, to continue to make sure these solutions stay available. It's a big freaking deal. Um, so, I mean, 700 reports of people killing themselves over losing their hair, um, and, and taking this drug, um, that, that isn't very even effective for hair loss. Uh, so they were 700 reports of suicide. And now since it's all patent, the generic version of the drug, uh, Merck defended the stance by saying there's no scientific ed evidence showing a casual, uh, a causal link between Propecia or suicide uh, and suicide ideation. But if you go on, I, I experienced it firsthand. Uh, the other concern about finasteride and DHT blockers, not just finasteride and testosterone, but DHT blockers, um, is is a potential increase in cancer. I, got, I actually got an email from a guy um, today. Obviously, I'm not going to say his name. But he had cancer, um, and he's a really healthy guy. He's a young guy, um, and he got cancer, um, and he he stopped taking. Propecia was the only drug that he was taking. He stopped taking Propecia, and thankfully, uh, his cancer has been in remission. But there there are some studies that show a potential increase in. There's some studies that show actually that finasteride reduces your chance of prostate cancer, but it dramatically increases your uh, chance of a, a really aggressive form of prostate cancer, a more fatal kind of prostate cancer. So um, actually prostate cancer runs in my family. Um, both my grandfathers had prostate cancer. So it's something I'm really aware of. Um, and if you catch it early enough, it's, 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 there's a lot of great medical treatment um, that it's, it's pretty, you know, treatable, but there's a, there's a studies that show that finasteride or dutasteride DHT blockers can dramatically increase the uh, the, the chance of the most aggressive form of prostate cancer that is the most, most life-threatening. And there's also some research that talks about, um, you know, uh, finasteride and breast cancer in males. Um, and that is because, you know, like you're reducing, there's other studies that show gynecomastia, which is a, which is a, um, like a breast enlargement. Um, but this is what's also crazy to me, guys, is this is what the big, like these are the companies in the hair loss industry right now, the biggest names in the hair loss industry, Hims, Keeps, and Roman, they're not going to be the biggest for long um, because we're we're going to be changing the whole thing. Um, but this is, th they're still promoting and selling these drugs, um, finasteride, um, 
one because uh they're they're not coming up you know any new innovation they're just selling the same stuff um and two because uh you know the the fda restriction of that there's only um basically you know minoxidil and finasteride so it, it, it like it really it really gets me going um that these are the you know the big companies with you know these are billion dollar companies guys these these are companies that are valued at over a billion dollars um and they're pushing the same stuff that that studies are showing um you know not only all these sexual side effects but also depression and suicide and you can go online they're running advertisements for finasteride generic finasteride that's all patent um and these guys came to the market because it became off patent so they they're selling the same stuff that you can get off you know at costco or cvs off the shelves so um anyway really kind of a sensitive subject for me um but i think it's really important bro uh or really important guys because um i highly recommend that you guys do not take finasteride i'm not a doctor so this is not medical advice but it's not necessary it's not effective um, to actually stop hair loss um you know, effectively enough by taking a, a DHT blocker, you would have to take so much more than one milligram of finasteride um, or dutasteride um, to actually stop hair loss that you would have even more dramatic side effects. So you're, you're effectively castrating yourself. And there's been guys that have said, you know, I've had a couple of guys say, you know, um, well, I haven't had side effects from it, so it's no problem. Um, and that's, you know, it's totally your decision and I respect, and I'm glad that you haven't had side effects. Like that's awesome. I'm super glad to hear that. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a serious risk. It's a serious issue. And, um, I promise you there's a better solution. You don't have to use, I, I, um, you know, that's, I, I, I'm not just trying to sell you Adagen here, but I'm trying to inform you and I'm trying to provide you the best solution. And I'm trying to give you the information so that you can make the most informed decision for your health. Um, so that's that's my talk about uh finasteride and dutasteride and um and that's a really i mean that's a really powerful like 700 people um guys like it's a big deal um so thomas my man he said more than more than welcome i suffer from depression too so i get what it's like uh, but that's another thing about this group not just for the hair but a positive amen dude thomas you're you're a hell of a guy bro um you're a really great dude and we're so thankful to have you here bro